In this study, you can see here type 2 diabetes, double blind randomized controlled trial. Uh, compared with placebo, quercetin intake decreased systolic blood pressure significantly in this, in this study, almost nine points. Um, you can see quercetin supplementation significantly reduced the serum concentration of tumor necrosis factor alpha, again, an inflammatory marker, as well as interleukin-6. Let's keep going. Lots of studies on quercetin. And in this one, you can see 78 overweight women who were um, 25 BMI, body mass index or more, with polycystic ovarian syndrome, so PCOS. So these were women who were overweight with PCOS. Generally, those of you that aren't familiar, PCOS, one of the biggest side effects is that it creates fertility issues. But PCOS, in essence, is, is a form of diabetes. It's, you know, diabetes of the ovaries. And that's why, that's why quercetin is working, because we see the impact of quercetin on blood sugar. Um, the primary treatment for PCOS medically is metformin, which is a blood sugar drug or a diabetic drug. Patients were randomized to receive 1,000 milligrams a day of quercetin or placebo. This trial went on for 12 weeks. What did they find? They found fasting blood glucose, insulin, and homeostatic model assessment of insulin resistance, or HOMA-IR, um, which is a common marker on blood work when you go see your doctor. All these decreased within the quercetin group. So quercetin lowered blood sugar, it lowered insulin, and uh, or impacted insulin, and it impacted the HOMA IR. Here we have another one on cardiovascular disease. So this was effective quercetin after somebody had had a heart attack. So this is a double blind randomized con controlled trial. And so what we got, we got 44 people receiving 500 milligrams a day of quercetin or placebo. This was done for eight weeks. And we saw a significant increased serum total antioxidant concentration compared to placebo. Lower TNF alpha, which again is an inflammatory chemical that affects the blood vessels in the heart. And you see, so 500 milligrams of quercetin in post myocardial infarction Patients for eight weeks significantly elevated antioxidants, but also improved the insecurity dimension of their quality of life. So it was a, a, basically a questionnaire that was given um, to these patients, and, and they found improvement in their quality of life as a result of supplementation. Here we have another one on um, quercetin impacting um, ovaries you know, just with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So in this one, as a review of studies, but what they found is that quercetin improves the quality of oocytes and embryos. It affects the proliferation and apoptosis and decreases oxidative stress in granulosa cells, all this important for fertility. Furthermore, quercetin can be used as a complementary and alternative therapy in ovarian cancer, and it has beneficial effects in the treatment of PCOS patients. Um, so again, several studies demonstrated our quercetin acts as an anti-inflammatory, anti-apoptotic, and antioxidant, and anti-cancer agent. Now we come over here, and we've got another one on quercetin. So 17 trials were reviewed in total. This is an analysis, a meta-analysis of data. Quercetin intake resulted in significantly decreased blood pressure. Moreover, participants who consumed quercetin for eight weeks or more showed significantly changed levels of high-density lipoprotein cholesterol and triglycerides in trials with parallel design. So impact on many of the cardiovascular risk factors for heart attack, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, blood pressure, etc. Let's talk about quercetin's impact on autoimmunity. So look at this diagram here. This is a great uh, review paper published in Frontiers in Immunology. And so in summary here, you can see a wide range of beneficial effects in biological activities, including any inflammation, antioxidation, neuroprotection. Several recent studies, quercetin has reportedly attenuated rheumatoid arthritis. So if you've got rheumatoid arthritis, pay attention. I'll, get, I'll share you, with you guys some of my clinical feedback in patients that we've seen with rheumatoid arthritis as well. 
but also inflammatory bowel disease, and that would be like Crohn's ulcerative colitis, celiac is an inflammatory bowel, multiple sclerosis as well, systemic lupus, erythematosus in humans, or animal models. So in other words, um, there, there are human and animal studies on quercetin in a variety of these diseases showing improvements. This review summarizes the evidence for the pharmacological application of quercetin for autoimmune disease which supports the view that quercetin may be useful for their prevention and treatment. And if you look down here, I'll blow it up a little more, you see this diagram here, quercetin taken by humans, right? We have a reduction in nervous system damage through a number of different mechanisms uh, that are oxidative in nature. And then on this right side here, you can see uh, an anti-inflammatory effect through many different mechanisms. And so these are what are oftentimes elucidated. These mechanisms are elucidated in cell line studies. And then once they have good data, they, they, they do human trials to see if it pans out in the body. And there's good data in using quercetin for, for several things. Let's, let's talk about some of that. Um, this, this particular study is another mechanistic study showing how quercetin helps to alleviate arthritis rheumatoid arthritis, so they analyzed the therapeutic mechanism of quercetin for RA, showing that quercetin ameliorates inflammation by inhibiting neutrophil activity. So it slows down how, how, how aggressive neutrophils attack things. So quercetin inhibited neutrophil infiltration and reduced plasma levels of inflammatory cytokines and promoted apoptosis of activated neutrophils. So it got rid of those neutrophils that were aggressively hyper-responding. These findings suggest that quercetin may be an alternative agent for the treatment of RA by inhibiting neutrophil activities. So that's one mechanism of action um, that's been elucidated. I, I want to show you this is a human trial on RA females and women with rheumatoid arthritis. This is a double-blind randomized controlled trial, and they were giving 500 milligrams a day or placebo. Now, I want to say this, 500, I'm really interested to see a lot of these researchers do more because 500 milligrams a day is a very low dose, clinically speaking. I mean, in my practice, we go oftentimes four to 5,000 milligrams per day. And, and it's just been my own experience that, you know, if you're sitting around 500, there's a much lower effect than is if you get into this range here. Um, but nonetheless, they used 500 milligrams in this study, and they had a significant reduction in early morning stiffness and morning pain, as well as after activity pain. Uh, the number of patients with active disease significantly decreased in the quercetin group. So 500 milligrams of quercetin per day of supplementation for eight weeks resulted in significant improvements in clinical disease activity including a reduction in TNF-alpha and, uh, and, and, this, and uh, improvements in HAQ, or, which is a questionnaire they ask about pain for these, for these women with RA. So human double-blind trial, I'd love to see that repeated with higher doses to see if effects or impacts were greater across a, a broader spectrum. In my practice, I can tell you they have been. Um, Here's another study on some kind of mechanistically effects of supplementation with quercetin on plasma CRP. Now, C-reactive protein, CRP, is a common marker that's monitored in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. So if you've got RA, you've probably been to your rheumatologist and they're running this marker on a regular basis to, to kind of measure disease activity. And so in this, again, this review published, what they found was that a significant effect of quercetin supplementation on C-reactive protein, especially at doses above 500 milligrams a day and in patients with CRP of higher than three. So if your CRP is higher than three, quercetin is helpful in that regard. Now, what I was saying earlier about my experience, this is a study done where doses above 500 milligrams, again, we go four to 5,000 in a lot of these people uh, and see significant changes as well, both in CRP, but also in pain and in joint swelling and other uh, disease markers and quality of life markers. Uh, let's hold on to that one. Let's look at, at, at this one next. So. 
For those of you who are just biochemistry nerds and you want to just see more, um, so this is a mechanistic drawing, if you will, of how quercetin impacts inflammation in the joint. And so you can see here's a, a drawing, a blow-up drawing of the joint. And over here we've got the immune effect of quercetin. So you see it helps to balance these different types of T cells in the immune system. It all, so this is one aspect is it balances how the immune cells differentiate, which helps with control of illness. But it also affects the antibody levels. So that's another mechanism, both immune mechanisms. Now, these are more anti-inflammatory mechanisms. And so through a number of different pathways, you see it reduces NRA bone erosion, reduces cartilage degradation, reduces migration invasion. That, that would be migration of white blood cells into the area, reduces oxidative stress, reduces the inflammatory response, and increases apoptosis of immune cells that are creating the damage. So all the mechanistic aspects to improve the outcome in people with arthritis. These have all been elucidated in cell line studies and animal studies and have now been tested. Uh, again, quercetin has been tested in human studies as well.